be working on a character bus here inside of Seabrush. I've been wanting to do some Seabrush stuff for a while now. And uh, yeah, today's going to be the day. So we're going to be working on this character right here. Her name is Medusa. She's a very, very powerful character champion or character from Dota, and uh, yeah we're gonna be working on everything that we need to create a nice interesting bust so one of the things that we need to do whenever we start a project is to get uh, to have like good reference um, by the way we should have the chat working as well so the chat should show if someone writes something can we do a quick test over there Sarn, just to make sure that we got everything working And uh, yep, 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 yep. Let me just make sure that this is functioning properly. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, there we go. So, nice, nice, nice. So, what we're going to do here is, uh, again, we're going to be doing this character. And uh, this is a very, very interesting character because one of the things that she has is that the snakes, they literally are coming from her, like, anatomy, right? So they're actually poking or protruding from the from the front, from the back. We got six snakes, which is relatively simple to, to work with. And, uh, yeah, so let's start working with the, with the character. Whenever I start a sculpt, I like to divide my process into like stages. So we're gonna start with the first stage, which is just the basic, uh, the basic blocking. I'm gonna use my move brush here, and uh, I'm gonna start like pulling and pushing the clay here instead of sea brush to generate a very, very sharp uh, like face that she has. She has this sort of like banana looking face with the like sharp chin going to the front. So I'm gonna start pushing this so we get that very interesting round shape let's smooth things a little bit there we go we get again a very sharp jawline you can see it right here so i'm going to use clay build up here to start carving in where i would expect the jawline to to end which would be right around there i'm going to try to work here on the center so that everyone can see and uh, yeah feel free to jump on the chat my friends i always try to answer all of your questions throughout this process so we got this very, very, very big eyes on the front, right around here. She's got this like nice, sharp, hook-like nose on the front as well. Going with the profile, as you can see, we were not really like pushing the profile out. And then she does have some very intense cheekbones as well. Now, I'm using this art, by the way. This is not the official art. It's a little bit more stylized, but I thought it was going to be a good um, idea. So... So yeah, that's nice. Dory, Dorky Boop, uh, yeah, welcome, my friend. We're gonna be doing this. Let's see how far we can get in the in this time. We got alerts, by the way. So I'm not sure, Dorky Boop, if uh, you are already a subscriber. But if you subscribe or follow, sorry, if you follow, we should get like a nice little animation as well. There we go. Yeah, I'm just trying to set everything up here. It's been. It's been quite a challenge. Well, not a challenge, but it's been very, very fun to, to try to figure out all of this stuff. A couple of months ago, I was doing a lot of streams inside of um, YouTube, which didn't have as many like bells and whistles as we have right here. Ajesh, how are you, my friend? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. So there we go. We got this sharp features like quite nicely right here. And uh, even though this is going to be a bust, I still want to have a little bit of the neck. So I'm going to go over here. Kartik, welcome, my friend. Welcome to the stream. And we're going to go right here. I'm going to mask this out, invert the mask with control and click, and then just drag this down. Push this back as well. Ooh, let's drag this down and push it back a little bit. And there we go. Dynamesh. And we're going to smooth this out. Of course, we need to fill in this gap that we have under under the head. Usually female characters, they, they tend to have like a very flat like um, um, underside of the jaw. So, so we're gonna try to keep this really, really, really sharp. And again, this this character right here is uh, really stylized. B D T D. There we go. So she's really stylized. So I'm gonna really create like some sharp features for her. There we go. The mouth looks amazing. It's a it's a very nice like long snake like mouth. So we're gonna go all the way over here. Dorky Bob, uh, I actually did stop your amazing guy guy Tamaya to watch you here. Oh, <laughs> there you go. So that one, the the unfortunately the um, the the course that you're mentioning, uh, that was when I was uh, with uh, next to the the older black brand. I'm no longer there. 
So I, I won't be able to give you as much support for that one, but we do have new courses with the new brand. So if you haven't joined our Discord, make sure to join and I can help you with the Maya stuff as well. We're gonna be doing uh, Maya tutorials and Seabridge tutorials as, one, as well uh, here with the, with the new brand very, very soon. Let's start modifying this a little bit. Even though her face is really flat, I still wanna like try to like generate a little bit more depth to it. So you can see, for instance, on the eyebrows, there's a little bit of volume pushing out. So I'm gonna add that volume right here. And it's gonna give depth to the whole face. Female faces usually, not always, but usually have a, a very round like forehead going into the nose. It seems to be the case for, for this character right here as well. So I'm gonna try to keep her nose really, really clean in that, in that regard. Now we don't have enough topology or geometry to, to add all of the detail yet, but we're gonna be adding more and more as we keep uh, pushing forward. Her face or her, her head actually seems to be a little bit wider on the, um, on the side. So I'm gonna widen this out a little bit. And her eyes, that's one thing that I really like it's got very, very aggressive eyes right here. So I'm gonna start carving in the shape. We're gonna get the eyes in there in just a second, which is gonna get, or I just wanna have like the basic shape right there. I'm gonna use now my move brush. I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive on the neck side of things. And let's do a little bit of her chest. This was a, <laughs> I'm not sure actually, let me see the, yeah. So this was a, a really fun, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys this story. This was a really fun discussion I had with my D&D group. Uh, I play a lot of D&D, we're playing Pathfinder right now. And um, there's a, a race called the, I think it's the Juanti, who are like snake people as well. And the interesting thing is a lot of artists, when they do snake people or snake creatures, uh, they add the uh, breasts, the, the boobs. So they're reptiles. Technically, they don't have because they are not a mammals, right? But uh, it's it just like, it looks nicer, I guess for some people. <laughs> so yeah, in this case, this uh, character right here does have uh, like a breast. So we're gonna have to add just the volume of where the breast would be. Yeah, it's very, very, very funny. Oh, Maria, there you go. Yeah, I know you're from the server. Welcome. Nice to have you here on the on the Discord as well, on the Discord, on the Twitch. Star Killer, I know that name. I know that guy. For those of you who don't know who this Star Killer is, he is, I think he's one of my first students. I think he was like my third or fourth student when I first started teaching in 2015 or 2014, something like that, uh, here in Mexico. So yeah, welcome Starkiller. You are who I think you are, right? Of course, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna reveal your secret identity right here, but uh, I think I, I know who you are. Phantom MM, welcome my friend. Yeah, yeah, Starkiller is, is one of the of the living legends. So there was something very interesting. When I was uh, in the middle of school, actually, I started my own little academy here in Mexico because I saw that there were a lot of people that wanted to learn 3D and um, couldn't like uh, go somewhere else, right? So I started teaching here and now, almost 10 years later, a lot of the first teachers or first students that I have are now teachers in, in a lot of uh, like school and universities here locally. So it, it's very fun to see that um, that what I've been doing for so long is now just like being passed forward. Very, very interesting. There we go. Nice. Let's use the move brush here to fix a little bit of the jawline. And again, guys, if you have questions about like the like techniques or whatever, just just feel free to to ask. I'm gonna add her shoulder muscles. Usually, when we're doing busts, you can go all the way to like the rib cage. There's like different uh, like depths on on how how far down you want to go. In this case, I do want to add a little bit of the the shoulder muscles and the breast will be a little bit lower probably. I don't want to exaggerate them too much. Like I don't want to, I don't want to like add a lot of attention to that area, to be honest. I want the face to be the main, the main, um, what's the word? The most important part. 
<laughs> Starkiller says, I'm still learning from you. Well, that's our motto. You can see it right here under under my camera. I, I One day I'll, I'll tell you guys where I, I got that motto from. But, um, but yeah, always learning, always improving, my friends. It's part of the, of the thing. Okay, so for the snakes, we got a lot of different options on how we can like handle the snakes. Uh, I think I'm going to be using sea spheres. And it's a slightly like, tricky like way to do it, but I think it's going to be for, for the best. So I'm going to create a sea sphere right here. Let's jump into the sea sphere, which right now should be on the center of the character. There we go. And then I'm going to turn on transparency. And I'm going to draw, you can see that there's two snakes coming from the back of the jaw. So I'm going to draw one sphere right there with symmetry, press X. So one sphere right there, push this out and then draw one more sphere. And we're going to push it to right around there. As you can see, this ones are a little bit lower, so I'm going to bring them right there. And then with Q, I can add a couple more points on the C spheres. And with this, I'm going to be able to to like generate the curvature that I want. So I'm going to I'm going to have this serpent be like this. So they're kind of like pushing up like this. Revan, what's up, my friend? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Lilith from Diablo. Well, this is uh, Medusa from Dota. So it's a, it's an original character from um, from Valve, um, from Defense of the Ancients. But yeah, she has a little bit of a... I mean, all evil characters have a very similar like feel, right? So this one, they kind of look like horns, like ram horns. So again, I'm going to move this in, into position where I would expect the little serpent to be, which is right around there. And then with Q, I'm going to start adding points to generate the sort of like ram effect. So as you can see, this ones go up and then they go down and they end up roughly at eye level. So it's all about like creating the curvature. Now here, this is very important. Right now it's symmetrical. We might uh, change the symmetry later on. Right now it's symmetrical. So one of the things that I want is I want to keep a clean silhouette. So I don't want this thing to be overlapping the other serpent right there because it makes it look a little bit weird. So. So I'm going to just move it a little bit, even though this looks like uh, antennas right now. We're going to be adjusting some of that stuff. Let's move this forward a little bit. Uh, actually, should we move it to the side, I think. There we go. There we go. Uh, this one seemed to be a little bit shorter, so I'm going to go to Q and Alt to delete some of them. So that they're like slightly smaller. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the spheres that we have right here to build up the sort of like curvature that we wanna capture for the little serpents. Does anyone on the chat play Dota? I played it all the way back for a little bit. There we go. So again, from the side view, want to create a, a, a nice like perspective. So I'm going to go to rotation, click this guy, just rotate this down. Just rotate this. There we go. Ooh, that's a great profile. Look at that. Great silhouette. As you can see, all of these negative shapes that we have right here, they're really, really, really cool. And now we have two more coming from the back. So I'm going to create another sphere. They're going to be right around there. And this one's kind of like hook forward. So again, I'm going to create one point. They're going to end up right around there, I would say. I'm going to push them forward. There we go. Star Killer just subscribed. You were not subscribed, Star Killer. Now I'm angry. Well, not angry, but I'm disappointed. Like, why? Why were you not subscribed, my friend? <laughs> We've been doing this for a couple of weeks now. Okay, so uh, W over here to move it, and we're going to add two more points going forward like this. And this is going to give us a, a nice effect right here. I play Dota sometimes, Alpha Omega. What what role do you like to play, Alpha? When I play, um, when I play, I like using supports. I've, I've always been a support kind of guy. <laughs> I'm not sure if it, uh, if it's obvious from my uh, teaching preferences and stuff, but I, I've always been sort of like a, a, a like a support type of uh, player. Let's do that. There we go. Again, we're, we're trying to look for a very cool silhouette. Like when we see it from the front, we should see something that looks interesting, balanced, something that looks uh, nice. I think the lower snakes, this one's right here, are a little bit long. So 
I'm gonna delete a couple of these points and just play with with this one's a little bit more. There we go, that's a little bit better. Perfect. So now we're gonna go all the way down here to adaptive skin. We're gonna make adaptive skin that's gonna create the actual mesh. Uh, M2, oh my god, your username is very difficult to say. M2 app key one I is now following. Welcome. So this one right here, I'm gonna go to uh, geometry. Or sorry, I'm gonna go back to this one, to the C spheres. I'm just gonna append, and we're gonna append that like mesh that we have right there. We technically don't need the C spheres anymore, but I'm still gonna keep them just in case that we need to do any sort of like modification. And here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this tool up, select this guy right here, and I'm gonna say merge, merge down, and that's gonna merge both of the objects. So now when we dine the mesh, as you can see, both of them are like united. And that's exactly what I want because now I can like start blending them in and I can start smoothing. Trim dynamic is a great way to do this. I can start smoothing this to create a very nice like transition from the head into this like snakes. There we go. Um, myth, of course. <laughs> No, I, I could never deal with the pressure of being myth, to be honest. It's, it, it, it always felt like a lot of uh, responsibility. I used to play League of Legends as well quite a bit uh, when I was, actually when I was a Nomen. So yeah, support was always like my role. Okay. So here, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just using very, very simple like clay buildup approach, a clay buildup approach to fill in all of the gaps that we have in between the snakes and the head. That way it looks like the, the snakes are actually like coming from the head and not just like plucked or like appended. We want things to look a little bit more natural, right? There we go. Let's do a quick save before anything bad happens. I hate when that happens, but gotta be prepared. There we go. Now she does have this very cool crown as well. We're gonna be adding that a little bit later. But one thing that we can, actually no, let's, let's add a little bit later. I was gonna say let's add the like the red glowing stone, but I think we can again add it a little bit later. Cool. So we got enough geometry now for this like first like base mesh, let's call it like just a, a very a very big uh, or very simple like situation. Alpha says I'm a bit confused with the hair issue. Do I understand correctly that the process of creating real time hair and hair for games can be different? Yeah, it's way way different. So so there's three ways in which you can create hair. I'm gonna take a small tangent here. So one of them is sculpted hair, which is similar to what we're doing right now. Like I know the snakes are not actual hair, but sculpted hair is a perfectly good way to do hair for, for games and stuff. Fortnite does this all the time. And the cool thing about sculpted hair is that it's relatively simple, relatively low poly, like you don't spend too many polygons and you get a nice result depending on the art style of the game. League of Legends, for instance, uses a lot of, uh, and Dota, of course, uses a lot of like um, uh, hair stuff or, or like sculpted hair thing. Then you have another thing that's called hair cards. Hair cards are, ugh, they're a pain. <laughs> I, I don't like doing hair cards. They're very time consuming, but they're a very efficient way to get really nice results. And, um, and they're really good. However, they are quite expensive performance wise because you're dealing with transparency and you're dealing with a lot of polygons to get like that nice curvature. However, AAA games, this is the way they do it for a lot of the stuff. And finally, we got hair systems. So for instance, XGen, right, for Maya. And there are new engines like Unreal. Unreal has now the ability to export the hair in curves and Unreal uses the curves to regenerate the hair inside of the, of the element. And this is gonna give you the most realistic hair that you can have. It's, it's like super, super, super amazing. However, it is very like, again, performance heavy. So if you wanted to do a game for mobile or something that's gonna be like a very uh, optimized, this is, this is not the way to do it. So those are like the, the three types of, uh, of different like uh, hairstyles or hair, hair systems that you can use whenever you're doing a character. So yes, the, the answer is they can be quite, quite different. Let's smooth this out a little bit to, to remove the, the lumpiness. I'm gonna use Trim Dynamic as well too. That's that one of the issues with, um, with the snake brush or the, the, the C-Sphere method that you get like the elements, but then we can use Inflate for instance if we feel like the snakes are being are becoming a little bit thin, we can use this one. And we got uh, a new sub. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for the sub. Thank you very much. 
we've been growing quite a bit we also have discord channels my friends we got a youtube channel with more tips and tricks about the whole like 3d process so if you guys want to learn more make sure to follow on all the socials um phantom says any particular reason why you're making this next machine c spheres and not making a vdm brush uh no that's fine it's uh it, it's um uh, it's just personal preference. I am gonna do the heads with a, well, not vector displacement, but I'm gonna use an insert multi-mesh to save myself a little bit of time. Um, but yeah. So let's go to geometry, dynamesh, and let's increase the resolution quite a bit so that we can start adding more stuff. And I think one of the things that I definitely want to add are the eyes. So I'm gonna go sub tool, append. Let's append some spheres. Grab the sphere, make it thinner. And we're gonna insert this. It's gonna be a relatively big eye. Usually stylized characters like this ones, they tend to have quite big eyes. It's gonna be right around there. There we go. And we're gonna say C plugin, subtool master, and mirror to mirror it to the other side. So now what we can do here is I'm actually gonna add some materials to this thing just to make it a little bit fancier. So I'm gonna to go to reflect red. I'm gonna turn on MRGB and say color, feel object. And then we can go back to our basic material. So now as you can see, the eyes are red and it, it just, it's a little bit fancier for what we're about to do. With clay buildup, we're gonna start building up the eyelids. And we're gonna start right here on this upper part, Let's start smoothing. And as you can see, the eyelids are very snake-like, right? They're very, very sharp. And then we have like an extra eyelid there on the on the back. And we go here to the front. And just by doing that, we're already getting something that looks a little bit closer to the character. I feel like my eyes are a little bit too big, maybe. So I'm going to go back to the eyes and just make them a little bit smaller. There we go. Let's clean some of this stuff and start rebuilding the eyelids. There we go. Did I miss any questions? I don't think so, right? If I miss any questions, let, let me know, guys, so that we can go back and, uh, and check them. Okay, so let's focus a little bit on uh, this area right here. Look at that. That's a beautiful concept, by the way. So I'm gonna use Damien Standard here I'm going to start adding some of this lines. So There's very, very sharp lines going, as you can see, towards the nose. And then the nose, it's a very, very sharp nose that we have here. So I'm going to start like building up a little bit of the curvature. And you can see this goes into like a pretty much like a super, super intense, like sharp line going in towards the mouth. So I'm going to dynamesh and we trim dynamic again. Just start cleaning this up. I can see that there is a little bit of depth right here. So I'm going to carve out a little bit of depth from there. That's going to give me more, again, a little bit more depth. I know I'm repeating myself a little bit there, but uh, that's what we're getting or trying to do right there. So we're trying to carve in this thing to really generate those shadows that we get from from the other. Now you can see the, the snakes are a little bit like annoying <laughs> because they're um, they're on the way. So here's one thing we can do. If we turn on polygroups, you're gonna see that every single snake has polygroups. I'm gonna press Control W to polygroup everything into a single mesh. And then I'm gonna select lasso and we're gonna select and hide all of the snakes right here. And then I'm gonna press Control W again. So now we got two polygroups, one for the face and one for the snakes. And at any point I can just press Control Shift and Alt and that's gonna hide one of the parts. And that way I can work on this character without having to worry about the, the other section. So polygroups are super, super, super important when we're sculpting here inside of ZBrush because they allow us to, to control different layers of a single subtool. Yes, we could have things separated into multiple subtools, but sometimes it's a little bit easier if we keep it on the same uh, subtool. So here we're going to have this very important wrinkle. I'm going to use Trim Dynamic to polish that line a little bit more. want a very like smooth transition kind of feels like uh, there's a little bit more volume there so i'm going to bridge that volume with clay buildup very very softly 
Uh, I get asked very frequently which uh, tablet I'm using. I'm using a Huion pen display, 16 inch, 16 inch canvas, canvas 16, 2021. I actually did a review like yesterday or the day before. It's on YouTube as well. There we go. Sarn says, what are the most important aspects of anatomy to consider when creating stylized characters in ZBrush? When we're creating characters, we always need to think about the proportions. So what is the relationship between the different things of your character? What's the size of the eyes? What's the size of the mouth? What's the size of the nose? And we also need to think about the planes. How is light hitting the different sections of your character? Sculpting, it's all about forms. And uh, we know that the basic forms are like a sphere, a cylinder, a plane, or a cube, sorry, a torus, things like that. So if we see, for instance, here on in the concept, if I see, uh, thanks for the follow, Alpha Omega. If we see this light right here hitting the character, that tells me that that's a surface that's pointing towards the light. And therefore, I need to go here with my trim dynamic and flatten this up to generate a very nice, interesting plane. Another thing that's very important for stylized characters is this sort of like sharp edges. Uh, you see this everywhere in, in stylized games. Like things are not like perfectly soft and round. There's always like like this beveled sort of look to to all of the all of the things. Uh, Burhanuddin, my friend, haven't seen you in a while. You found us. You found the channel. So let's push this up. You can see that that's where the mouth like creates an interesting effect. I'm gonna give it like split lip here in the center. And uh, we're probably going to be doing some teeth in just a second. But as you can see, she doesn't have a lot of lips. So the volume that I'm going to add here on the lips is going to be very, very like soft. It's just a very like interesting shadow right there going towards the chin. So I'm going to keep it really, really, really simple. And again, with smooth brush, we're going to simplify the whole thing right there. Now, it's interesting because I, I see the face that's very flat, but I can see that our artist like created a very interesting muscle that I always talk about. It's not a muscle, but it's a form. It's called the nasolabial fold. And it's this line that you see here going from the corner of the nose towards the mouth. And he, he she, like I can see there, the shadow that we have right there, it's very, very like, like interesting to see. Uh, it, it briefly describes that shape right there. So, so I'm gonna add it. I'm a huge fan of that, of that muscle right there. It really adds a lot of like character to the, to the character personality to the character. Then you can see that the eyes are actually like quite like sunk. So I'm going to push the eyelids here a little bit more towards the center. I'm going to use them in the standard to sharpen the border of the eye right there. And you can see these are very, very evil eyes. So I'm going to make sure to, to really keep that very like sharp effect. Let's go. She has a veil. I haven't seen it before. She has this like interesting veil covering her face. Uh, Dorky Bob, very cool. Thank you, my friend. Glad you like it. There seems to be a lot more like empty space on this area right here. So I'm gonna carve out. You can see the dark effect. This is very common. Um, and and the best example I can give you is Simba from The Lion King. So if you have seen Simba's design, especially when he's a, ch a child, his his eyes are very chiseled. Like you can pretty much see the planes of the eyes like right there like that's a big plane that's a line that's another plane so it, it really looks like he's carved into stone right so that's the kind of stuff that i'm seeing here on the concept because i see this huge shadow on the top and then this other plane right here so that tells me that there is a line that pretty much goes back there and all of this on the top is a plane right there and all of this down here is also a plane so that gives me a lot. It's gonna give me a lot of sharpness on the on the character. Um, can I somehow render hair made in Blender with the hair curve system in UA? Yeah, it should be possible. Like as long as you can export the curves in an alembic format. Alembic is the is the format that we use. You should be able to render the curves inside of um, inside of um, what's the word? Um, Unreal. I just thought to convert it to mesh, but yeah, no, 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 don't don't convert it to mesh. Like keep it as a curve, but again, try to try to export them as as alembic. Now here I'm gonna gonna make the, the 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 cheekbone a little bit like more intense, and she doesn't have ears, but I would expect the cheekbone to to follow a very like similar process going back. 
I'm going to use them in the stander again to generate the very, very nice, super creepy smile that's coming all the way here from the back. So we got this very, very nice effect right here. You can see we even have some, some cuts there. Seems to be another one right there. Another one right there. It's got this evil look. Very nice right there. Uh, Dorkybog is asking, do you prefer sculpting in ZBrush more than in other softwares? Yes. 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 <laughs> I mean, I I have been sculpting inside of Blender lately, and it's really good. I would give it like an 8 out of 10. Maya is like 6 out of 10. Maya is horrible, horrible for sculpting. I hate sculpting in Maya. I've actually, I don't think I've ever sculpted like something cool inside of Maya because it's just, it's such a bad software to sculpt. Um, but they, they know it, like they know that they're not supposed to be. That's why they had uh, Modbox a couple of years ago, but I, I believe the support for Modbox has been discontinued. So, so there's not a lot of stuff that you can do with Modbox nowadays. You can still get it and there's some cool tools in it, but, uh, but yeah, so yeah, Seabrush is, is, is king. I don't like what they've done with the subscription and the, and the price. Uh, it's really, really like abusive, I would say. Uh, but that doesn't mean that's not a good software. So it's a really, really great software. So it's a little bit more volume there. As you can see, it's a, like a big bulge going towards the crown. And uh, there's a muscle usually that we have here coming from the back of the jaw towards the front. And in female characters, it tends to be quite important. You're gonna see it quite a bit, which is the sternocleidomastodius. Mastodius. Sharper right there. Oh, let's soften this up. Um. M2 says, will all the streams be on Twitch from now on? By the way, I'm, I'm Mert from YouTube. You may re Yeah, of course I remember you, my friend. Welcome. Um, yes, yes, all the streams will be on Twitch because uh, we have more stuff that we can do here. We got the followers, we got the subs, we got um, all of this like fancy chat and stuff. So, so yeah, we will be doing them here inside of Twitch from now on. But the streams will be available in YouTube a couple of days later. Uh, I think this one's going to be available tomorrow. So if you miss one stream, don't worry. You can still watch it for free on YouTube. If you want to know when things air and all that stuff, make sure to join the Discord because that's where we always notify whenever a new short, a new video, a new post. Like whenever we do something, we let everyone on the Discord know. Uh, Dorkybot says, yes, uh, at the moment myself as a complete beginner and student, I have free license for Maya. Yeah, yeah and, and, and even when you graduate, uh, Maya is still quite affordable. Maya has this thing called the Indie License. That's the one that I have. So as long as you're not making a lot of money, uh, which right now I'm not, but hopefully later on we will, um, you can pay only, it's like uh, in, my, in, in, in Mexican pesos, it's like 4,000 pesos. In dollars, that would be like $200 or something like that for a full year. So it's, it's perfectly, perfectly worth it. But even then, like Blender is a great, great option um, for for learning 3D, especially. Let's do some like details here. That would be like the pectoral muscle. So it's just like scales or something. I don't know. Let's do that something because it, it looks kind of kind of empty. I'm gonna work a little bit here on the shoulder muscle, and there we go. Yeah, any questions on the chat, my friends, and I'll be happy to answer. Okay, so again, right now, if we take a look, this is looking quite nice. We're we're getting, I would say, to a nice uh, position. Uh, the face is, uh, is looking very nice. I do think my nose is a little bit too thick. So here's where I'm going to start doing, like, corrections. For instance, I'm going to make the, the, the nose a little bit smaller. I think it's a little bit long as well, so I'm going to push it up a little bit more. Yeah, not bad. But we definitely, definitely need to add the, like this crown right here. Let me go and look for more reference. Medusa, do that too. Because I, I don't really understand what that crown is or how it's, there's like this big crystal on her, on her forehead. And then, yeah, it's like a crown, right? Okay, so the crystal seems to be embedded on her. Any, any like uh, Medusa user, it's like, oh yeah, I know the champion. Yeah, the, the crystal seems to be embedded on her head and then the crown goes around the, the head. At least that's how I am understanding it here. 
And I think it will be it will look very very cool to have crystal like coming from her head. Yeah, that seems about right. So let's do let's do the the little crystal right there. When should we move from Dynamesh to Siri Mesher? When the detail you're trying to add no longer holds with the topology that you have. I know that sounds really weird, uh, but uh, for instance, when you're trying to do wrinkles around the eyes or around the mouth and, and the squares or the Dynamesh is way too high and you want to optimize things, that's a good moment to, to jump into um, into Siri Mesh, reproject your details and work in a, in a subdivision uh, fashion. I'm going to use Trim Dynamic here. As you can see, this sphere has got this sort of like hammered look so i'm literally just going to start hammering it's a very very cool trick to to get this sort of like effect like gemstone effect so just trim dynamic and especially on a sphere that has a lot of curvature it's very easy to to build see that quite fast right no need to worry about a lot of stuff we just get this like very nice faceted look for the for the thing here, I would probably recommend like breaking symmetry, especially on the on the middle line, so that the like little polygons that we're creating there with the trim dynamic they don't look all too similar. It's still a sphere, right? But it, it it shouldn't look too too different. Now proportion wise, it's a little bit bigger than the eyes. It's probably gonna be around there, and it seems to be poking a little bit more like forward. So something like that again i'm looking at the distance from this point to like the globella which is this part right here and i'm trying to to measure to make sure that we got the the right proportion what's my favorite dota character oh that's a great question uh i'm always a huge fan of tanks so there's this tank that i really really like let me show it and i remember when when i used to play uh, that was one of the ones that i used where is it this guy <laughs> earth shaker so I, I always liked like this super tanky uh, champions. It's very, very fun. I, I've never played like competitively, so I, I'm not like super, I'm not a pro, but yeah, I've always liked this like bulky characters. And, and I like, I really like ice characters. Like if I, if I had magic powers and I could choose my own magic power, I would definitely pick ice. I don't know. I've, I've always found ice to be quite, quite fun as well. So here I'm going to be very, very subtle with the, uh, with the integration. I don't want this, this stone to be like a, like a horn just poking out. And, um, and we're just going to like move these guys around. There we go. So it, it looks like it's embedded there, but again, I don't want to, I don't want to like add a, a really complicated silhouette or anything. I want to keep it, keep it simple as the, as the saying goes. Yeah, in, in every game, I always pick like like tanky characters, like the Paladins, the Crusaders, and stuff like that. I've, I've never been a fan of like glass cannons. Because they're very like finicky, right? So <laughs> it can be it can be difficult to to capture them. Okay, so the crown, the crown is definitely going to be a challenge because I don't have a lot of like cool reference. I guess this is like the cleanest one we have. It's like two horns pushing up. So I'm going to append a, a new sphere. And then what I'm going to do with that sphere is I'm going to use it as a base. And with more brush, I'm just going to start like blocking in the general idea. Let's Dynamesh, of course. So I'm going to go geometry Dynamesh. You can see these are like curved. Whenever you are struggling to understand a shape or a concept, go for the forms. Like try to see what forms they are. So to me, this this looked like uh, like cones. So I can see like a very like sharp line here on the center, and then there's a uh, like a flat. Let me go here there we go i can see like a flat like point right here as well and that sort of like gives us the shape that we're seeing there on the concept and then the crown seems to be going further back 
So I'm going to use clay build up here too. To bring some volume, kind of like pulling the hair out of the of the character. I would expect the crown, to be honest, to to play a little bit with the with the gemstone as well. It's not that far down, so I'm gonna just start carving out. As you can see, when we see it from the side, this point right here should be falling right at the halfway point of the of the little like red glowing stone. So all of those like relationships that you have between the shapes, those are the kind of things that you need to learn how to see so that you can capture them in the, in the element. Yeah, that happened to me with, with Smash Brothers like um, a couple of years ago when Smash Brothers Ultimate came or, or I released. Uh, I had a studio back then, Critical Hit. And uh, we have a, a very cool team. Actually, Starkiller here. I'm not sure if he's still around, but the Starkiller was one of the artists there as well as... Um, who else was here? Rev Revan. Revenant. Those two guys were, were part of my team. And, um, and we played every day. Every single day we would play like Smash Brothers. And we would get really, really stressed out. There you go. We would get really, really stressed out whenever we lost because it was very competitive. We were very competitive. But then um, we started seeing what, like what the pros were doing. It's like no, there's, there's no way you can uh, <laughs> there's no way you can uh, get to that level without dedicating your your whole day and your whole life to to the game, right? So so yeah. So now I try to play to relax. I'm taking some artistic liberties here. For instance, since I don't have a lot of information to what's going on with this like section right here, I'm gonna start like flooding in, just creating some designs that that match the concept. And that's one of the cool things about this kind of exercises. You can get fancy. So for instance, here I'm gonna use them in a standard to to create like a nice like line going in. And then with move brush, I'm going to create an acceleration. So I'm going to push this up a little bit. And as you can see, that gives me uh, a sort of like a visual shape because we got this like a sharp, um, like protrusion on the, on the crown. Oh, there we go. Let's just trim dynamic again to, to sharpen this up. <clears throat> And again, I'm not really sure how far this thing goes. That's a really cool skin. That's one of the things I, li I like about like uh, MOBAs. They have so many cool skins. Mm. Yeah, it kind of seems like a tiara. So, so it kind of goes around, it seems. So this things definitely need a little bit more support right there. I'm gonna blend them in so they go back. And again, since we don't have a lot of information here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do something cool on the back here. I'm gonna use my move brush. And what I want to do is just follow the shape language. That's uh, that's another thing that you can do when you are not sure how something like flows or or how it works. Just follow the shape language and try to try to carry that sort of like design into other parts of the character. Now the snakes are going to be, of course, the the main the main thing here. But as you can see, we can like create this sort of like crest or something on the back. And it shouldn't look too out of place. Oh, there we go. How are we doing on time? 40 minutes. Hey, not bad. Not bad for 40 minutes. I thought we were already like at the hour or something. But no, that's great. 
we're we're gonna be able to finish this. I'm always scared about starting this sort of like a quick scope projects because uh, it becomes kind of like a race to see if we can if we can make it or not. There we go. Cool. So we got again the the blocking of the of the crown that looks uh, again it looks interesting. It's 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 something. And now when we go back to the character. And we bring the the serpents back. We should be able to to start seeing the the concept as a, as a more full concept, right? So, so this right here looks really, really, really nice. I think we're we're really getting there. So let's talk about the snakes now. What I'm gonna do with the snakes actually is I'm gonna go to a different uh, poly mesh, and uh, I'm gonna start with a sphere. Here, sphere. We're gonna make this a poly mesh 3D, <clears throat> and we're gonna do the head snake right here. So I'm going to use um, Moon Brush to start like keeping the snake the, the sort of shape that we would expect. My brother, uh, he's, a, he's a snake collector. He has several snakes. His, some of them are really big, really scary. <laughs> but uh, they're, they're quite noble. They've never hurt anyone. There we go. Let's dynamesh this. So uh, geometry. Dynamesh. Actually, before we do that, let me just quickly save this. I'm gonna be so mad if I if I lose everything. So let's create a new folder here. Let's call this Medusa. There we go. Perfect. So we just want like a base mesh for the for the snakes. This doesn't mean that it's going to be the, the final, like, uh, the final snake itself. Just a, a basic construction. Let's make them a little bit angrier. Pythons or venomous snakes us usually have the, the face in a very like sharp angle and the non-venomous snakes usually have the the shape of the head a little bit more round not always <laughs> so don't trust my advice not always it's like a tiara let's see we've got a link right here give me just one second yeah it's like a tiara cool 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 uh, Star Killer says, "Are you thinking about making a UE5 complete course like for newbies on real?" Um, I didn't have the plans to do that, but what kind of stuff would you be interested in, in learning? The thing is, I'm, I'm more of an artist rather than a, a, a game developer, so I know how to do the assets. I know how to do animations, rigging, modeling, characters, environments, but it's all about like the asset creation side of things, and the Unreal involves a lot of like programming skills. And I do know the, the basic stuff about it, uh, but I'm not as uh, prepared because that's not my area of expertise, really. But we could do something. A couple of years ago, I did uh, I did something. We did a, a little like course, uh, like a summer camp for 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 young. Uh, I wouldn't say young kids, but they were like from 13 to 17 or something like that, and uh, that was quite successful. We called it Game Maker. So they created some basic assets inside of Amaya, and then they brought them into, into Unreal, and they created like a little platformer, platformer game. That one was fun. Okay, I definitely need some reference because this head looks horrible. Snake head. No, that's a fish. <laughs> Snake. Head. Okay, it's a little bit better. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So let's copy this. We can get it here into pure ref. Pure ref, by the way. Perfect, perfect. Um, like a super, super great like a resource for every artist. If you're an artist, you should have pure ref. You can see that eyes are like further forward. The face is way flatter. I'm 
gonna fill this in a little bit and just re-sculpt that. Same for the mouth, I think the mouth is like way too high. So we're gonna keep this a little bit simpler. From the side view or from the front view, I can see that this is more like an arrowhead. There we go. That's why reference is so important. Because we think we know how things look, and we don't. And we don't. So that's where the eyes are going to be. We're going to have to model the eyes like independently. There we go. Let's smooth some of this out. And then let's use our, our Demian standard brush to, to recreate the, the snake smile. Try me dynamic, and there we go. Okay, so this is looking a little bit better. We can still improve it. I'm gonna spend a couple more minutes on on this head because if we nail a, a one head of the of the snakes, then all of the other ones are gonna be a lot easier. See, here's the thing: like the snake that she has seems a little bit chubbier, and we do want to respect the concept. So, we'll make some small adjustments here and there. There we go. There we go. We've got some scales. I'm just gonna like briefly suggest the scales right there with clay buildup and then with trim dynamic. Just move them out. And again, they, they give us a sort of like a scaly vibe, right? So just a, just a brief description of how we would expect the the scales to to look. Sometimes it's more about what you suggest than what you're showing. So keep that in mind, especially with such a small like part of the character. Let's make the snakes a little bit angrier. There we go. So now, as you can see, we got this uh, snake head, and what we can do is we can create a brush out of this snake head. So I'm gonna press B. And I'm gonna create a new insert mesh brush, and now I can insert snake heads. Look at that. As many snake heads as I want. So I'm going to go back to my uh, character right here. And we're going to insert the first snake head right there. Just position it properly. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this is like pretty much a, a snake brush. That's right. Let's draw another one right there. This one I'm gonna make a little bit smaller, rotate it down, cause they're like facing forward a little bit more. Try to kind of, kind of like them facing to the side. There we go. Let's take a look at the proportions real quick. And yeah, they're they're small heads, so they they shouldn't be like, like drawing too much attention. And finally, we have the last snake head right there. Now the problem is, or one of the, the things that we're gonna have right here, is when we release this and the Dynamesh, we might lose a little bit of detail, as you can see right here, but we still get like most of the form from the snakes, which is exactly what we want. And now it's a matter of cleaning up some of these curvatures. You can use Inflate as well to, to soften up all of the elements. Here's where the, the remeshing process, someone was asking about this, could also be really helpful because with the remeshing process, one of the things that we're gonna get is we're gonna get like clean topology, especially these elements that are very like tube-like, we should get a, a very nice like distribution. But here, what we really wanna do is just, 
just blend these things a little bit better. Add a little bit like folds and stuff, like the belly of the of the snake. So it doesn't look like it's just like poking out of the of the element, right? So there's a lot of like scales and the just texture that we can find on this snakes. 16 viewers, can we get to 20? I think so. I think we can get to 20. There we go. So again, see that like very harsh angle? I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna see it, there we go. I'm gonna try to isolate it. And with Trim Dynamic, we're gonna start smoothing things out and getting rid of that effect. Another thing we could have used was like a curve brush. I think that like in hindsight, that might've been a little bit better, to be honest, because we wouldn't need to do all of this cleanup right here. But it's not that big of a deal. So it also gives us this like rough sort of like sketch look, which I always find quite uh, quite nice to have on my sculptures. There we go. Trim dynamic again. And we're gonna get right here. Start adding more elements. Sorry if I move this to the side. I don't know why I do that. Let me move it back to the center so that we can see it a little bit better. There we go. Just move that out. Again, for instance, that like bend right there, I'm just gonna fill it in with a little bit of uh, like clay buildup and then smooth it out. And move brush. Just move brush here and there to, to create a very like clean, nice curvature on the character. If the snakes start looking a little bit weird, for instance, right there, make sure to to modify them. Let me just check real quick here because I'm I'm getting like spam on the message. Uh, give me just one second. There we go. Okay, so sorry about that. And we'll just keep adding more volume right here. Yeah, so I think this is looking quite nice. And then now, well, we need to, to do a little bit more work on the armor here on the tiara. So let's increase the dynamesh resolution a little bit more. And let's keep on polishing here. And as you can see, it has like a like a gold border. So I'm gonna show you guys a trick that we can use to, to generate that border. Let's see how clean we get. It's not gonna be as clean. Like ideally, if I wanted to do that border, I would probably take this character into Blender or, or, or Maya to, to do a little bit of retopology on those sections so that we can like properly project things or create like a, like a cleaner transition. So here again, I'm, I'm I'm trying to follow the the shapes to generate something that that looks like it's part of the design of the original character. So we go here. There we go. Smooth things out a little bit. I think it might be a good idea to 3D print this this bust right here. Might look interesting. Cool. So now here's the technique. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna mask out the shape of that like armor piece that we have going around the the, the tiara. That's what we're gonna do. So let me just move this around. There we go. So you can see it's kind of like a like a gold border 
that we have going here. Now I'm going to try to be as sharp as I can on the on the mask. This is going to be very important. We've got like the capstone right there. Then this side that we have another like border going down. Got this border right there. Then this goes like around like that. I see a like an interesting line right there. Okay, I'm just gonna take some some artistic liberties here. So that would be like one part of the panel. And then on the back here, let's do like another like panel right there. I'm not gonna do the top part. And on this side. We could just paint this, like this could just be texture, but I actually want to model this. So we create this loop right there. There we go. Careful here, filling this other border on the outside. There we go. Now we have another like interesting cut right here. That's nice. And it would make sense to have something similar here on the back. So, so I'm going to just like continue this and it just creates something that again, that merges the whole profile. So it's kind of like drawing a cage around this, this thing. I definitely need to grab this top part as well. And here let's, let's just blend it and and finish with like a curve right there. There we go. So as you can see, that creates a, a very nice like detail. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to subtool and we're going to extract it's very important. We're going to extract with a thickness of zero and hit accept. And when we do that, this is what we're going to have. Oh, there we go. So we're going to have this like very basic shapes of our element. I'm going to go all the way down, all the way down to um, the formation. And we're going to use this option called polish by features, which is going to like straighten up things a little bit more. We've got a question that says, when sculpting stylized characters, how do you balance anatomical correctness with stylistic choices? Mm, that's a great question. So anatomy should always be like the base. And, and, and that's the like the famous quote, right? Like you need to know the rules in order for you to break them. So it is important to understand how anatomy works so that you know how you can you can break it. I usually don't push things like into a super, super stylized cartoony realm um, because then they look a little bit weird. But it, it's it's a matter of, of experience, I would say, and practice. Unfortunately, that's one of the things that you definitely need to get a, a feel for. So now I'm going to go geometry, series measure, and we're going to series mesh this. As you can see, we get a, a very nice distribution of polygons. That's a little bit closer. I'm going to select half and I'm going to series mesh again. And what this is going to do, as you can see, it's going to simplify this until we go into like a very low poly version, which is this one right here, which is looking quite, quite nice. And once we have this low poly version, we can go to subtool, sorry, uh, geometry, dynamic subdiv. We're going to turn this on. And we're going to add thickness to it with the offset to positive one. And what that will do, as you can see right there, is it's going to create the actual like thickness to the to the armor. And you can go as thin or as thick as you want. I'm going to keep it roughly around there. And I'm going to say apply. So now that those things are actual like geometries that are on top of the whole thing. And we can now go with again, a brush like trim dynamic, for instance, and sharpen up a little bit of this guys. So now it looks like, a, again, like an armor that sits on top of the, like the tiara or whatever that was. Let's just a little bit of trim dynamic there. And again, we're getting this sort of like hammered metal effect, which I really like because it looks very, very stylized. And you can imagine that with a, with a nice, like a golden color, we can get a, a very cool effect. 
can you show how to get a render with Redshift in ZBrush? Yes, so it's it's actually very easy. Let me save real quick. Um, if you have the newest version of ZBrush, which in this case is 2023.1.2, you have access to Redshift. And uh, Redshift is a like ray trace, like more like complete render package. I still, like in my personal opinion, I don't think it's the best render. It's a good render, but it's not the best render. So what we can do here is if we just go to render and select um, Redshift Renderer, we activate Redshift Renderer, and that should give us access to Redshift. Now, last time I was I was just installing this new Seabrush like yesterday or two days ago, so it might crash. That's why I'm, I just saved. Um, before that happens, though, let me go back to my like snake brush here. I'm going to save this snake as well. So let's call this snake just in case we need to rebuild it. There we go. So technically, if I hit a render, uh, the stream is going to lag a little bit because it uses CPU and this thing is also using CPU. So give me just a couple of seconds. And let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to close this. But technically, if Redshift is installed properly, which I don't think it is right now, unfortunately, that's why it's not doing anything, um, we should get like the Redshift uh, effect right now. So give me just one second. Okay, so it seems like it is rendering. There we go. So yeah, that's Redshift. So as you can see, we get better materials and stuff like that. Right now we're getting like this sort of like effect on the character. Um, it's gonna start cleaning up. That's gonna look very nice in just a second. The the thing that I don't like, and I'm actually very angry. I, I I wish, like I understand why corporations try to always like make the most profit, but I feel like Seabrush had a long trajectory of of caring for their users, and when they got bought by Maxon, we don't um, we don't do that, or they don't do that anymore. And one of the things that they are not doing is that they're not offering Redshift a GPU when you buy the subscription to Seabrush. If you want to have access to Redshift GPU, you need to either get a license from Redshift or you need to get the Maxon One subscription, which is like $150 per month. It's just way, way, way too much. You can see right there. It says, the current image was rendered by Redshift CPU in 53 seconds. You can accelerate the rendering speed by using a Redshift compatible graphics card and subscribing to Redshift or Maxon One. It's like, dude, I'm already paying you $45 every month to get Get access to Seabrush, and you still want to charge me more just to get faster renders. I find that to be like quite, I'm not sure what the word is, but quite cheap. Like that, that's not cool, man. <laughs> that's just not cool. And, um, but here's the thing. We do have Blender. Blender is free. You can get very quick and fast renders with Blender. We also have some of that stuff on our YouTube channel. So yeah, like the, the, the weapon, I'm not sure if I have it right here. Let me show you. Uh, 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 uh. So the one of the latest, like the late the, the new course that we re released, the, the the weapon, we did that inside of Blender, and uh, the renders that we got were Blender renders, like this one right here. Like that's a Blender render, and it looks really really freaking cool, and it's free, right? Like Blender is completely free, so you can get this result with Blender. So again, if you want to check this out, it's uh, it's right there on the on the comments. So uh, yeah, that's it. We got the, the very nice like a golden armor here for, for Medusa. And I think now we can jump onto the next section, which is gonna be like the details. We can definitely like push this into the detail side of things. So someone was asking like, when should we push details or Dynamish and stuff like that? This would be a good moment to do so. But in this case, I think we can still push Dynamish. So I'm gonna go to this guy right here. Just go to Dynamish and push the resolution to like double what we had. So now we do that, and we're gonna have like just enough geometry. Especially when when I'm doing this quick sculpts, uh, since I want to focus on on just like making something that looks really cool, I I don't worry too much about the like the topology and stuff. What I do or I am gonna be doing is I'm gonna change the alpha from this square alpha to the alpha twelve, which is a round alpha, and this is gonna give us a um, what's a worth? This is gonna give us a a, a faster or a more like smooth effect. So for instance, here on the eyes, I'm gonna start adding. This sort of like membranes going forward and then smoothing them a little bit. See that? See how, how nice those details start to look? Let's smooth all of that like ugly things that we have. Here's another trick. We can use Control and Shift to just select an area of the character. And that way we can just work on this area. So usually on the lower, or, or sorry, the upper eyelid, there's going to be a little bit of a, 
of a concave area right here, like a hollow point. And then we got the, the actual eyelid. I'm going to use them in the standard to, to start adding more detail here to the, to the upper eyelid. All the way over here. And then the lower eyelid, this is the lower eyelid. And we're going to smooth it out and clean it a little bit. But then this thing right here, this like dark thing, that's like the, the eye backs. So I'm going to add a little bit of that as well. And as we talked about, this is going to be a flat area right here. And we're going to have another like flat area right here. And you can see, for instance, there's a very cool line going from the uh, corner of the eye all the way down to the mouth. So I'm going to add that one with Damien Standard. And now that we have the resolution, we can definitely start capturing like those sort of details. You can also see that we have a couple of extra lines going here from outside the eye. Those are like usually kind of like expression lines. So they kind of like follow the same sort of like direction here. There we go. And we can start like using, since we have again more, more geometry, more topology, we can start adding this very, very cool like thin details. You can see here on her face, she's got like this sort of like scaly effect. So, so we can start adding that sort of like expression lines very subtly, right? We want to keep things very, very subtle. This is something that might not be like, if we wanted to 3D print this, I would definitely need to, to be way, way more aggressive with that sort of thing. Because otherwise, like, unless we print this like really, really big, like you're not going to be able to, to capture the detail in the print. here let's start separating the like the membranes from from where the different like snakes are like merging so we always want to make sure things look natural so so the blending the transition from from like the snakes to the head they should look very very natural even if we need to add a little bit of like like skin and folds right there that's the kind of thing that we would need to to do I think I can use the mini standard to, to push the eyes here a little bit deeper to make the eyes a little bit more evil. And let's just trim dynamic again to polish this a little bit more. Again, get some, some more intense, stronger lines and sections. The mouth, as you can see, it looks very ugly right now. But again, we have way more geometry. So I'm going to smooth everything out here. And then with them in a standard, we're just going to go in there and start detailing all of this right here. I'm going to carve in a little bit of the lips right there. If we need to, we can, we can smooth this out. Can you share some tips for beginners who are interested in stylized sculpting? Yes, of course. So the first thing is we need to master the tool, right? So, so we need to feel comfortable with a ZBrush. And um, I'm actually working on the on the new tutorial, the new premium course, and it's gonna be it's gonna be very similar to what we're doing here. It's gonna be releasing hopefully by the end of this month. And uh, one of the things that I do in that tutorial is we go through several exercises before we uh, do the, the main character. So try like finding a challenge, be like, okay, I'm gonna try to do a skull right now. I'm gonna try to do a snake. I'm gonna try to do an elephant. I'm gonna try to do a lion and try to capture the information from those elements into, um, into a stylized effect, right? So, so you're gonna take pictures from uh, a real lion, a real snake, a real elephant or whatever, and you're gonna start stylizing them so that you get a, a, a nice result. Um, stylization, it's a lot about studying as well because um, 
there's there's a lot of games out there that have been doing stylized stuff for for a long time now blizzard of course is is one of the big ones league of legends dota so if you study the kind of stuff that people have been doing throughout the years you can develop your own sort of like style in the stylized sense uh because th that that word stylized is is a uh, it can sometimes become like a like a cheat way to say, oh yeah, this is my style, and and I don't know anatomy because this is my style, and that's how I do it. But that it, it shouldn't be like that. You you can do stylized stuff, but you need to be uh, you need to you need to follow the rules. <laughs> you need to follow the the basics, the the things that we've been doing for for a long time. Like this is I'm, I'm talking about like going all the way back to like the Greeks and the Romans. Like those guys were sculpting anatomy like freaking masters. That's why in the Renaissance, um, one of the things that the sculptors were trying to imitate was the old like Greek and uh, and Roman sculptors from from back in the day. So. So that's the sort of stuff that you need to focus on. If you want to be a great digital sculptor, you need to learn the basics of sculpting, um, and then you transfer those or uh, those elements, that information, into stylized sculpting, which is which is this thing that we're doing right here. I think I, I've mentioned this before. It's uh, you you learn the rules and then you you break the rules, right? Thank you, thank you, Doriko, Dor 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 Dorky Boop. Thank you, Dorky. Yeah, we're trying we're trying very very hard to to get you guys as much content as possible. And I'm sorry about the the sudden transition. I know it was really really weird, but it was inevitable. Okay, so let's add a little bit more volume here here in the back again to to connect all of this to the back part of the head of the character. This is the kind of characters that if I was a rigger, I was like, oof, I'm not I'm not looking forward to rig something like this. Uh, not because it's difficult, but it's, it's very uh, a little bit tedious because there's a there's a lot of things that you need to do. So every snake is a spline based uh, rig, and then you have facial rig as well, and then you get like uh, the tail rig, like uh, Medusa moves like a like a snake with the tail. So. So there's so so many things. It's a fun rig though. So it, it will be fun. It will definitely be a fun exercise to to try to do, but uh, it would definitely be challenging. I'm gonna call in. I, I kind of wanna create a like a pre dear insertion point here. There we go. Here for the for that thing. There we go. Yeah, yeah, Rigors will be like, damn, what am I getting myself into? But you know who is to blame? It's not the sculptors. It's not the modelers. It's the concept artists. They are the ones that go crazy with the concepts and they create amazing looking things. But once you try to translate those into 3D, you're like, damn, <laughs> how am I going to do this? It can become really, really complex. So... So yeah, it's the, if you want to blame someone, it's the concept artist. No, but it's thanks to them that we get so many cool things. So be kind to your concept artists. They're going through a, a bad patch right now due to all of the AI stuff that's coming out. It's definitely a challenging, challenging thing. And 3D is not far, uh, my friends, like... We're gonna get some some interesting tools in the next couple of months, I would say. Um, don't be afraid of it. Just embrace it and see how we can evolve from it, because it's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mech designers, um, they they do that a lot. They they create this amazing mechs, but they don't. They don't feel for us modelers, and they're like, yeah, I don't care. I'm just going to do something that looks very cool. And then you're like, dude, it's going to take me months to do this, like, gun that you attach here. Could you simplify it? And they're like, nah. Let's do it cool. <laughs> there we go. So one thing we can do here, for instance, is the, the changing color that we have on the concept. We could actually sculpt it in a little bit because we're not going to be texturing this guy. We could polypaint, but again, I, I, I don't 
do a lot of polypaint to be honest. So we can sculpt that change in the in color. So like a like a transition from the scales. And that's also gonna give us a, a nice effect right there. Now, as you can see, we do have a couple of snakes that have the mouths open. Uh, I think it's worth it to, to do that. So I'm going to show you how we could do one of that elements. I'm going to break symmetry here. I'm going to select one head of the, of the snake. I'm going to go to like a side view. And I'm going to go to mask. Again, let's select that guy. We're going to go to mask lasso. And we're going to mask out the mouth right there trying to to keep it as close as possible there we go and then we double you i'm gonna press alt and get this pivot point inside of the jawline invert the mask and then just open the mouth like this as you can see the the curvature went a little bit to the side that's fine it's just this is asymmetrical so it's a it's a good challenge as well to to sculpt asymmetrically there we go now when we dynamesh that snake right there is going to have a, a whole more volume right in, right in that area. Let's isolate it again. And then with uh, select lasso again, I'm going to hide all of these things right here. I'm going to invert the selection. Actually, let's hide the other side. So we're going to hide the actual snake. There we go. Invert the selection. Actually, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because um, because of the way that uh, Dynamesh does it. It's just going to close it again. So I'm just going to like start carving here. This is one way to do it. We could also go back to the, the snake mesh that we had. Open the mouth, sculpt the mouth open. And, uh, and just re rebuild the little head right here. But in this case... This I'm going to go for this sort of like sculpted effect. I think this works fine. Let's just start carving here. Dynamesh again. There we go. And we're just going to push this in. There we go. Nice. Yeah, that's a cool way to to open mouths, and especially since we are still in Dynamesh, it, it it makes for a a fairly fairly simple way to do it. Here I'm gonna use the snake hook. B S H. I just want to get an idea of how this thing's gonna look. Yeah, it's not bad. I I'm not loving it because it's it's asymmetrical. It's looking a little bit like uh, like wonky. So I think ideally we would need to to go back and uh, and fix this. So therefore, I I'm just gonna go back. I I I'll rather have a a, a clean cloth uh, close mouth than uh, than start dirtying it up with uh, with that open mouth. And I don't think because we still got like 30, 40 minutes left. But uh, I want to go into details into more details. So. So let's keep the mouths closed. One thing that I am going to do is we need to eye, uh, add the eyes to all of the snakes in just a second. And uh, I do want to pose her a little bit because right now the pose that she has is very simple, I would say. It's very just like a straight front view, right? Which a lot of the times is, is fine, but in this particular case, especially if we were going to go for a a nice clean render. We should try something a little bit more interesting. Just posing very, very simply. And again, especially for an exercise like this, if, if this was being done for production, then yeah, we could keep it um, in the in this like sort of like straight pose, T-pose or whatever you want to call it. Um, but for, for concept pieces, for, for illustration purposes and stuff like that, we can definitely post characters too to have a, a nicer... A nicer result. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go, I think now we can start adding some of the scales and uh, I don't have a lot of scale alphas to be honest, but there are some right here, like uh, this one, the scaly skin 26. So I'm gonna grab my uh, standard brush and use a drag rect just to add a little bit of detail to the snakes. Oh, let's change this to C sub. There we go. Now it's very noisy. That's one of the things that I don't like, but I'm just gonna use it to, to very briefly describe some, some scales. And then with smooth brush, I'm just gonna like smooth them out and that's gonna give me the sort of, uh, again, stylized effect. So so it's a quick way to to just add a, a little bit of like bumpy texture to the to the um, uh, backs of the, of the serpents. Is serpent and snake the same thing? I'm not sure. Do you guys know? I think so, but I'm not sure. There we go. So we just add the scales and smooth them out. And as you can see, that already gives us the sort of like texture that we're looking for. In Spanish, we call them serpientes, serpent, and víboras. I think that would be snakes, but I'm not sure if there's really a difference. Smooth that again. As you can see, that's really, really with the smooth. You gotta be very careful with the smooth. We don't want to overdo it. We just want to have like a like a simple, clean smooth. Same here, like on the shoulders, we can add oh a little bit. Oh, let's keep that green color. That looks nice. There we go. Yeah, not bad. Serpente. That how you say it? Serpente. Io no posso parlare italiano. I have one of my best friends. He's in Italy right now. He he lives near near um, Bari. He he was my childhood best friend. He lived like across the street from us, and. Um, and I could, I, I understand Italian pretty well because he would always speak in Italian with, uh, in, in his house with his parents. So I, I just like, uh, I just learned by, <laughs> by listening. I can't speak it, but, um, but I, I definitely can understand it. So if I, if I'm ever lost in Italy, I think I can survive. go okay let's add the serpent eyes so i'm gonna go i'm just gonna use insert multi now actually i'm gonna add so a penth and we're gonna paint a sphere nice nice yeah uh when, when i was younger i was i was fortunate enough to go to to a trip to europe and uh, i visited the um, venice uh, pisa Assisi and um, and Rome. Oh, in Florence, we went to Florence as well. Really cool trip. There we go. So. There we go. So here I'm using a W. Just like getting this as close as possible since the scales or the, the snakes are not perfectly symmetrical. Just push this down. Saving. There we go. Go. Oh, nice. By parents, you mean your family? Because parents is like mom and dad. Or do you mean some relatives? Relatives are like a aunt, uncle, cousins, stuff like that.
Oh, that was that one was a little bit trickier. Let's uh, center the pivot point real quick. There we go. And we go down here. We're doing Control and Alt to duplicate the eye on the same subtool, so that when we mirror this, we don't have to do this over again. There we go. So I'm going to say C plugin. And then mirror. OK, perfect. And then we can do the same thing. We can go to the reflect rect material and just say MRGB color field object and switch back to our basic material. So now all of the serpents also have their nice uh, red eyes. Let's do the same thing for the gemstone right here. So I'm going to go to to the reflect red color field object and we go back to our basic material. Oh, quite better, right? Such a simple thing, such a simple change and it already looks very nice. I'm actually going to do something similar. I'm going to add like, I don't know, uh, like this metal dark color to the tiara and then to the border of the tiara or the, it's not the tiara, the this guy's right here. I'm going to add like a gold material. Actually, the gold looks a little bit too, like this one. There we go. Color fill object. Then we go back to our basic material. Oh, seems like we forgot to add it here. Yeah, let's go for this like matcap metal color fill object. There we go. So now we got a, a slightly different effect. And uh, even though we don't have color, it looks quite nice. Yeah, it's looking dope, right? There you go. Yeah, relatives. Nice. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with the elements right here. And I think we're ready to go to our clay render. What do you guys think so far? Cool sculpt? Are you learning? The important thing is that you're learning. Are you learning? Let's get close here. I think the lips need a little bit more definition. I'm just gonna like emphasize the border a little bit more right there. And then when we smooth, that should look really, really interesting. There we go. Let's sharpen the mouth a little bit more there. We're already at 3.5 million polygons, so that's that's quite a bit. Okay, so I think we're ready to go into posing. I think uh, posing would be a really cool thing. And then if we have enough time, I'll I'll do the render real quick inside of Blender. So what I'm gonna do here for posing is we are gonna be using. I mean, there's a couple of ways we could do it. Um, I mean, I'm, I guess since the the character is not that complex, I'm just gonna merge everything. So I'm gonna go subtool, merge, and just say merge visible. And this is gonna merge everything into a single like element right here. And once we have this, we can start posing. So the pose is gonna be very simple. I'm gonna to go to mask lasso and I'm gonna mask the neck from everything else. And then very carefully, I'm gonna to go to mask pen. I'm gonna remove some of the mask here. Because I, I don't wanna like I wanna I wanna mask this like very close to to where the head meets the, the neck. Because that's where we're going to be like rotating. There we go. Now I'm going to move the pivot point down to the base of the neck right around there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this. And she's kind of like in this sort of like three quarter view. So I'm going to rotate the head and rotate everything down a little bit. So she's got this more menacing like face. As you can see, this really breaks the neck, so I'm going to have to 
to push it and move it a little bit. Uh, careful here. I'm having some issues with the snakes. So that's why the masking process is very important. I'm going to go back to mask lasso. Let's mask those snakes to make sure that we're not... Look, when we move it, there we go. So when we move it, we're going to move this down, rotate it down. And I'm trying to like figure out what the what the shot's gonna be. So it's right around here. I'm gonna invert the mask, and you can see that she is raising one of the shoulders up. So I'm gonna use my move brush here to just like move the shoulder up and the shoulder down. So we get this sort of like nice effect. Again, I'm trying to imagine what the vinyl shot's gonna be, so it's probably gonna be around here. And here's when, where, since we're doing this asymmetrically now, we can definitely like start playing with uh, with sculpting and just re-sculpt or, or change certain sculpts as we see fit. I'm gonna do some some clean cuts in just a second as well to to make this like a like a Roman sculpture. So all of this is kind of like chisel stone, you know. I think something like this, like slightly, slightly to the side is, is working nice. Uh, Injury coming course, which softwares are you going to use? I'm avoiding Blender, to be honest. I'm not sure if I should learn it or not. I'm going to be using ZBrush and Photoshop. Just that. It's just going to be a, a full ZBrush course in the next one. And after that one, we're going to do a Maya course as well, which we probably have some Substance Painter. I... Uh, the reason why we decided to do a Blender course was because there's a lot of people that are just getting into the industry and that uh, they want to learn like 3D like as fast as possible. And Blender is a really cool tool. It's not a bad uh, software. However, I do understand that uh, not everyone uses it, but it's it's not bad. It's like not bad at all. Now, what I'm going to do here, again, I'm thinking about the shot. So so this is probably going to be the shot right here, something like like this. And uh, since we have this, I do want to add a little bit of variation to the, to the snakes especially. So I'm going to use a BMV. A VM, and I'm actually going to use... I don't want to use Move Topological. I think I'm going to use Move Elastic. Yeah, that one works. So I'm going to mask this snake, for instance. Invert the mask. Or just normal move. And we're going to break the symmetry a little bit with the, with the snake. And then we're going to invert the mask or just like mask this one right here. And what I can do is I can go to the top view. Let's mask everything else here. And just rotate this snake a little bit to the side. Maybe even like push it down or something. Again, if this is going to be the shot, maybe, maybe up actually. Let's... Let's push this snake up a little bit right there. And of course, there's going to be like a little bit of fixing that we're going to have to do. So we just like correct a little bit of that. Let's see. Yeah, I, I've been using Maya for 10 years, 12 years, and it's a great software. However, after using Blender for the past couple of years, I can definitely see the benefits of it as well. It has some really, really, really cool tools, and uh, I mean the fact that it's free is just really good. I've been I've been liking the Blender renders as well a little bit more than Maya renders, to be honest. So, so I think if you're a three D artist and you can afford the time to to learn a little bit about Blender, you are gonna become stronger as a three D artist as well because it'll it'll just give you more more tools and more options. And that's always like a good thing for us. There we go. Don't forget to save. Oh yes, I haven't saved. <laughs> Let's save this as post. There we go. So what I'm doing here again, I'm thinking about the shot, which the shot is going to be like roughly around here. I think this is the shot that we're going to have for our, our render. And as you can see, I'm moving some of the snakes. I, I like the snake looking straight at us. That's that's funny. Uh, but for instance, this one right here, it's, it's really like obscuring a lot of the character. So I'm going to grab the whole snake here. 
and I'm just gonna like move it to the side a little bit rotate it just move the insertion point there a little bit so that the so that the distortion that we're getting is not as bad and that way this this distortion that we have here should be a lot easier to fix by just like landing certain things here So again, if we, if we think about the shot, look at that. So now we get a really, really clean look at the whole face, at the whole shot. And um, and in general, I think this looks this looks very nice. I think this is gonna look very nice. I'm gonna remove this. This is what the clear render is gonna look like, as you can see right there, which I, I think it's quite funny. Again, I really find this, this snake right here quite funny. It's just like looking at us like, hey, who are you? Um, let's add some extra details. So for instance, I can see that the scale right there so we can just again thinking about the shot the the final render shot i can just add some some lines right here to describe like scaly skin same thing over here because i'm just thinking about the final render like what can i do right now to make the final render look amazing i think we can push the chain a little bit forward this is asymmetrical, by the way, like we're working with asymmetry. So we can even change like the the expression a little bit, like maybe the left side of the mouth is slightly higher. And those are like subtle details can really help sell the the whole thing. There we go. I think the nose is a little bit big still, so I'm gonna fix that a little bit there. I'm gonna make the eyebrows a little bit more intense by pushing them forward. Andy, um, I wouldn't say you're late. You're still gonna be here for the for the final part. We're gonna go into into the rendering section. Uh, but don't worry, if you missed all of this sculpting thing, it's going to be on YouTube tomorrow. The full live stream is going to be right there. There we go. Cool. Now, I'm just going to use the... Um, I'm going to save real quick. Yes. And I'm going to use the clip brushes. These are some old brushes, the clip curve, or where is it? Clip curve brush to just do some clean um, cuts right there on the, on the character and make this look a little bit more like a, like a Roman sculpture or something. So now we have a, a clean cut right there, which is also going to help with like shadows and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We're ready to jump into Blender. So let me move my tablet out of the way for a second. And we're gonna be um, doing a quick, nice render for this character right here. So the first thing, there, there's one thing that I do wanna do, which is it would be really cool if we can keep the eyes, the sphere and the serpent eyes as a separate mesh so that we can have the red material on them. And then everything else would be, um, would be um, the clay material. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my poly groups option. I'm gonna say other groups, and I'm gonna hide this character right there. Oh, let's go to selection mode. There we go. Let's hide this guy, this guy, and this guy. And that's the that's the group that I want. So I'm just gonna press Control W to group all of that together, and then Control W to group all of these things together. And if we go to sub tool, we can say split groups split and we should have two elements right here so now i'm gonna go to this one the post one i'm gonna go c plugin let me move this to the side c plugin um decimation master we're gonna decimate this because we can't take this many polygons out and let's decimate to 250k which is a very very one very like normal one um pa -pa -pa -pa. phantom says would be nice if you did a top five 3d printers review i don't have a lot of 3d printers so it's 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 difficult to give you a review when i don't have as many 
I've only owned a Short Tracks M200, which was a traditional like filament back like 2016. And then I got the Mars, the original Mars, uh, Elegu Mars, which was really good. Um, and now I have the Elegu Mars 3, which is again, really, really good. So I've been using Elegu for the last couple of years and it's the, the brand that I recommend. However, any cubic is also like quite nice and it uh, you can get a, a very, very like similar, um, similar result. Okay, let's just wait for this decimation to finish. That now's the moment for to ask for questions, my friends. So if you have questions, again, now's the now's the moment. Okay, here I'm just gonna keep this one as they are, and then now what we can do is we can uh, go to C plugin, and then we're gonna use FBX export import. We're gonna export all, and we're gonna export this Medusa. That's perfect. And post. Let's call this Medusa post. Let's wait for this to export. And that's great. Let's go to Blender. Oh, one thing that I love about Blender is that it opens so fast, like so fast. It's like two or three seconds and then boom, you're in. Uh, Maya, I love Maya, but it takes forever to open, forever. So let's go here, Assets, Medusa. Uh, I, I don't remember if I have the plugin. I had a plugin that allowed me to drag and drop. It seems like I don't have it right now. So let's import FBX. On the new uh, Blender Blender 3.6 released uh, last week. And uh, on this new release, they, um, what's the worth? They added something that makes the, the loading of the FBXs a lot faster, as you can see right there. So let's scale this up go let's grab both of them let's set the scale to one and one there we go let's uh, grab both elements a g and z to push them up i'm gonna go into my thing right here and we're gonna go for a square render so i'm gonna change the proportions here to 2048 by 2048 and the reason I'm doing this is because I know we're going to be using this on the <laughs> on our socials, so might as well get the render already. And he's asking, when I'm doing a character, should the legs be bent or straight? Straight. They should always be straight if you're going to read them. If you're going to pose them or do a 3D print, you can model like however you want. But if you're going to be, um, what's the word? Da, 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 da. If you're going to be uh, doing a character for production, straight is usually the way to go. You can have them semi-bent, like like instead of like super, super straight, there can be a little bent to them. That's fine. Uh, but usually you, you don't want to like exaggerate the pose. It makes it a lot more difficult for riggers to, to do that. So let's go here, camera to view. And again, let's go for our, our shot. Ooh, that's a great shot right there. Look at that. Nice. Uh, I'm wondering if I want to change the focal length of the camera. Right now, the camera has a focal length of uh, 50, I think, is by default. Yeah, 50 seems fine. If we want to exaggerate this a little bit more, we can go for like a 35. And then when we get closer, there's going to be a little bit more perspective to it. But I think for a character, 55 actually or 70 is really good because you get the very nice like portrait effect. 70. So you get this very like cool like portrait. So this might be a little bit too flat. Let's try 55. There we go. And again, let's try to find a, a nice like composition right there. Perfect. Um, what do you guys think? Should we add infinite background or should we keep the background black? Let me let me hear the, the boats here on the chat. Should we keep this or not? Or rather, should we do infinite background or not? Well, you guys tell me black, black. Okay, it seems like we're going for a black background. That's fine. We're going to go environment and we're going to bring in a color. I'm going to bring in an environment color, environment texture. And we're going to open. And I do have, um, what's the word? My source image is right here. And I got a clear sky. Yeah, let's use that one. That one's like a blue, blue HDRI. If we go here to um, material preview, you're gonna see that we get this very nice like blue effect. Let's uh, go to render. We're gonna change this to cycles and we're gonna change this to GPU compute. So now if we go into render, we're gonna be able to render. That's another thing that I love about Blender. Uh, again, I've been a Maya user for a long time. 
Blender is so fast. Like, look at this. I can actually work with real, real time ray tracing things inside of the viewport, and it's not like having any issues whatsoever. It's it's very very powerful, and that this to me, like being able to work on a render at this speed, is just invaluable. To be honest, <laughs> I'm not gonna say that, Phantom. I not I'm not gonna say that. So I'm going to go here to environment. I'm going to say 0.3 on the intensity so that we don't have the main light coming from the environment. And now on the ray visibility, this is very important. I'm going to turn off the camera. So with this, there's not going to be any visibility. So now when we go here, it's going to be a black background. Uh, right now we have the floor. If you don't want to see the floor, we can go over here and we can just get rid of the floor and that uh, we can even get rid of the axis right there. So this is going to be a, a very nice preview of what we're going to be seeing once we do the final render. Now, I really like what the like the artist did right here with the with the illumination. So I kind of wanted to go for something like this. First, let's let's do a quick like material setup. So for this guy right here, I'm going to add a base color or I'm actually I'm going to add I'm going to remove that material and I'm going to add a new material. It's going to be a sort of like greenish material, green hue, definitely darker. And on the roughness, I'm going to bring the roughness down a little bit so we can see a little bit of glossiness. There we go. And then for everything else, I'm going to add also a new material. It's going to be red. And this one's going to be really glossy. So I'm going to bring the roughness all the way down and the specular all the way up so that it really like shines a little bit more. Are the hands the only part of the character that should be bent like you talked about? Yes. So so that's that's one of the things that I've discovered or learned throughout this last couple of years. When you're doing or modeling hands, if you model the hands straight, it makes the life of the rigger very easy on the rigging process. But on the skinning process where you bend elements to get like proper deformation, it becomes a little bit more difficult. People usually don't like doing skinning as much, so it's a little bit better to do the hands slightly bent like this because it's easier to go from this position to this position and from this position to this position than to go from this position all the way to the closed position. So I've actually seen some people modeling the characters with the arms like forward and slightly bent like this. I've never done that because I've never been in a production that requires me to do it, uh, but it's, a, it's another thing that could be done eventually. So, so yeah, that's... Uh, you're right, Andy. That's that's one of the parts where you can do things slightly bent. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a vertical split. On this side right here, I'm going to keep my render. And on this side right here, I'm going to work with my lights. So the way I like to work with my lights is first, I actually sometimes like to even turn off the lights completely. I'm going to add a new light right here. It's going to be a area light. And this area light, as I see here, it's coming... Kind of like from the front. It's kind of like if she's looking at a at a door or something. There we go. And on the power, we're gonna do like two thousand. There we go. So I'm gonna bring this down. It's a very like frontal light that we get here. Two thousand is way too much. Let's go down to like one thousand. That's a little bit better. But the interesting thing you can see here in the concept, this is there, there's a very cool shadow hitting the top part of the character. So what I can do here is I can actually add a like a plane, rotate it, and use it to block a little bit of the light. See that? So you can use geometries that the camera is not going to be seeing to change the way that you're like presenting something. Now I can go to the um, to the world and bring a little bit of fill light in. So like a 0.2, for instance, that's going to like fill in a little bit of light here into my into my character. And uh, I, I definitely want to play a little bit with the temperatures. So this one right here on the light, I'm going to make this a little bit warmer. There we go. bring a little bit more light in maybe a little bit more intensity like 1200 and of course I'm gonna just duplicate this guy shift D and rotate it and we can get like a like a nice rim light here on the back so that's not bad 
It looks a little bit flat, to be honest. And it looks flat because this light that's coming from the front is very like front facing. So we, we lose pretty much all the shadows. So I'm going to, I'm going to change a little bit on the composition here. I'm going to go for a more traditional, like three point light setup so that we can get some interesting shadows. Usually when I'm doing characters, I like to light them from the, from the right. There we go. So something like this, and then this rim light. It's gonna be on the other side. Yeah, that that uh, this this is like the in Mexico there's a meme with SpongeBob and and la vieja confiable, which is like the old trusty trustworthy uh like technique. If you do this technique, you're gonna get good results like nine times out of ten because it's, it's just it's just such a good uh, such a good uh, composition that you can use. So yeah, now we can still use the idea to block the light. So let's see if we can get something interesting here. Mesh. I'm gonna do another plane. Yeah, and now there's a couple of things. I haven't really explored them too much, but there's a new thing where you can use light light paths. So you can have this plane be in front of the camera and it's not gonna really like change much. So see how that plane there changes the way we're, we're getting this sort of effect. Another thing I can do here, and this is where we can get a little bit fancier. I'm gonna add another light. It's gonna be a point light. And this point light is gonna be here in front of her face. Like right around there, I'm gonna make this a very like yellowish light, and start increasing the intensity. Let's go for like 500. There we go. Definitely increase the radius so that the shadow is soft. And what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm adding like a like a double, uh, let's call this like a double key light. So I got my main key light, which is this one right here, and then we got this extra like punch on the key light that's adding the very nice warm tone on this part right here for the for the character. So it's uh, again, it's, uh, it's a little combination of tricks. This is not a light setup that you're gonna find on the street or if you go to like a restaurant or something, you're not gonna get this exact light setup, but we can cheat. And that's the cool thing about the lights in the, in the 3D world. We can do a lot of cheats to generate something that looks very nice. I'm gonna go to the render setup now. Let's set this to what? Let's say 30 seconds, I think should be more than enough. And let's do render and render image. Let's see what we get. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. So for a two hour quick sculpt, starting from absolutely nothing, I think we've managed to create something that looks very, very nice. Um, yeah, I think I think the angle could be better. So I'm gonna rotate this a little bit so we get a little bit more perspective there from her from her chin. And I'm, I'm also wondering if we can change a little bit of the flesh flow. So, Let's go for a little bit of a uh, wider focal length. It's going to give us a little bit more perspective. It's also going to make her look a little bit more heroic as well, because there's going to be a little bit more distortion on the, on the camera. Render, render image. And there we go. Yeah, that looks way, way better. So yeah, that's it, my friends. This is the end of today's stream. There you go. We're going to be um, uploading this stream, as I mentioned, to YouTube. So if you are just joining and you missed some of the parts, like the initial construction and things like that, don't worry. Everything's going to be again on YouTube. Feel free to join our channel. Um, we're going to link some of our socials right now, which is going to be like our YouTube and Discord and stuff like that. If you want to join. And um, that's it. No, thank you, Andy, for, for hanging out here on the, on the stream. Thank you guys for, for being part of the, of the whole thing. And um and uh, stay tuned for more stuff. Stay tuned for more uh, content. We got, again, our, our premium course available in case you want to learn how to do this, like, renders and, and modeling and, and sculpting here instead of Blender. You can check that in the description and in the, our bios. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Medusa, done. So thank you very much, my friends. That's going to be it for me today, and um, you'll see a little bit more of uh, our stuff uh, in the next couple of hours when we release more like shorts and things like that. So again, stay tuned. Thank you very much, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.